Hello! I'm going to do my first video on fermentation, so I'm excited. Um, it's kind of a newer hobby in the past two or three years that I've been diving pretty deep into. Um, today I am going to show you guys how to use pineapple peels to make a Mexican beverage that's called tapache. And traditionally it's made with a lot more sugar than I like, so I have kind of adjusted the recipe and cut back the sugar quite a bit. Um, it's also usually made with a cinnamon stick and a lot of variations will have, you know, some allspice or cloves or, you know, different spices kind of along those lines. I have learned from a couple different rounds of it that what I really like is just the pineapple, um, a cut down version of the sugar, and then a bunch of fresh ginger. Um, sometimes I'll put a couple black peppercorns in too but it is really delicious. It's nice because as far as a fermented beverage, it only takes a couple of days, whereas something like a kombucha can take 10 to 14 days between the two fermentations. And basically by two fermentations, I mean that the first fermentation is the starter, and then the second fermentation is to really get bubbles into the beverage if that's you know, what you would like. Some people won't even do the second, but I love bubbles, so I always do the second, and sometimes I even do it for a little bit longer. Um, the longer that you ferment at the second stage, also the more dry it gets because the um, bacteria is eating the sugar that's left in there. So if you like something a little less sweet, you can let it sit out an extra day, and it'll get a little more fizzy, and it won't be quite as sweet. So. First, I will show you how to cut up the pineapple and then we'll go through the stages, but it's really super simple, so. Let's get this camera right. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is just cut off the top of the pineapple and get that out of the way. That is basically the only part that we do not need. If you live in a tropical place, you can plant it. We do not. So one thing that turns people off a little bit is that you really are not supposed to actually wash the outside. Um, so it is definitely ideal to get an organic one, but basically what's on the outside helps to kind of build this ferment. So once you have the top and the bottom off, it's kind of similar to cutting a melon. We wanna make sure to kind of get all of those spiky brown spots out of it. Um, and we don't need to worry too much like we normally would if we kind of get a little extra fruit on the rind just because we're only using the rind. So the thing that's really nice about this is that it really is something that you're making from scratch. So all of the fruit we're still going to use the way you normally would in your smoothies or you know just eating fresh and then the peel is what is going to make our drink. So we will start. I have um, just my Dutch oven you don't want to use metal when you are fermenting because it actually inhibits the healthy bacteria. So I have just a cup of brown sugar and then I'm gonna just kind of arrange all of my peels in here. I'm gonna brush some of that away and then we're gonna put the core in as well. So it's kind of nice. You're basically using any normally unused pieces. And you know, this is something that if you're cutting up a pineapple, and you're not ready or have the time to make the beverage as well, you can always throw the rinds into your freezer and do it at another point. So, oops, <laughs> I usually quarter mine because then it's a little bit easier to just kind of cut that core directly out and not lose any of the fruit. And I'm gonna freeze my fruit for smoothies. All right, and then the other thing that I'm putting in besides my ginger is obviously water is our liquid. Um, it's always optimal to use filtered water. I don't have a filter on our tap here, and I definitely do not like just buying gallons and gallons of plastic jugs of water. So um, one thing you can do is I'm gonna grab my pitcher here and if you let tap water sit out for 24 hours all of the chlorine rises out of it and that's kind of the big bad guy basically and the reason why you would want to use a filter so 
So we want to make sure that it definitely completely covers all of our fruit. And that's like the perfect amount. Um, and the other thing that's kind of nice about this too is, you know, so many of my ferments that I do, I have to use a, you know, specific glass gallon jar, or quart jar, or different things like that. And it's kind of nice to just be able to use like a kitchen item and set it aside. So what we'll do is just lay a towel over it. And, you know, this is something that kind of requires some experimentation and it, it really does depend on what you like. So I have, I have kind of grown to like a two day first ferment and a two day second ferment but so many people do just one and one. So kind of, you know, see what you like. Um, I am going to grab a wooden spoon and just kind of stir the sugar in a little bit, and then we'll just let this sit for a couple days, and we'll be back. Go to Pache, go to Pache, go to Pache, go. Day one, not much happening here. You can see we've got a little bit of foaming going on. Basically what we want is for a lot more foaming to be going on. So we'll check in tomorrow. Okay, our tapache is ready to bottle. You can see all of the bubbles forming. You can also see that the color has changed a lot from basically just being infused by the pineapple. And the other big thing is the aroma. Um, so if you go to make it and you're not sure if it's ready, basically 48 hours is the longest that I really let it sit um, on that first fermentation but give it a smell and you'll you'll definitely smell like it's a very nice strong pineapple um, aroma and so that's kind of reassuring to know that it's done also so now I will bottle this and I will let it go another day um, just a warning this particular um, fermentation gets super super carbonated both pineapple and then also ginger um, are naturally they have enzymes and then that make them naturally carbonate really easily so of all the other carbonated drinks kombucha kefir that i've made this one gets wildly wildly bubbly which is so awesome but you have to be careful of it so um definitely burp it after 24 hours if you want to let it go another 24 go for it but make sure that you get it in the fridge right away after that and sometimes you kind of want to be careful with opening it um and by burp it i just mean you know, let in a little bit of oxygen and let out some of that um, trapped air. All right, let's bottle it up. Okay, finished project. We've got our tapache here. And um, one lesson that I learned only recently is that once you make something that's that carbonated, to put it in the fridge before you even open it. Um, you know, we've been burping it and everything, and that's how we can see how far it's come. Um, I've also learned that if you kind of add like a little bit extra of your liquid to just a plastic bottle so that you can feel how firm it's become, then you have a really nice indicator of where you're at. Um, but two days is plenty of time to get a really nice bubble effect and everything and then just put it in your fridge before you open it because you will lose almost the entire bottle if you open something that pressure carbonated um, while it's still warm at room temperature because basically when you put anything fermented into your fridge, it stops fermentation. So anyway, I have just completely showered rooms with tapache in particular. We're gonna let it go. You can hear that nice fizz. And this is like one of my favorite little fermented beverages as far as the carbonation, just because I love bubbles and it gets a lot of them. Looks good. Don't forget you can make cocktails with it. It's actually really um, refreshing with like a beer and a lime too. All right, enjoy.